It's a motorcycle named after a bird that eats other birds. A motorcycle so fast that the company who made it agreed to limit its speed only a year after its initial release. It broke the rules of what a sport bike could be and in doing so created a custom scene that's unlike any other to date. This is everything you need to know to get up to speed on the Suzuki Hayabusa. It's another motorcycle, toot toot. I know that sometimes I can be a jokester, but I also have a serious side, a classy side, a sophisticated side. Excuse me, can I get everyone's attention please? I'd like to thank NOS Energy Drink for partnering with Up To Speed and me, James Pumphrey. This lavish event wouldn't have been possible without their love and their support. So I'd like to make a toast to NOS Energy Drink. To, to NOS, NOS Energy, Energy Drink. Drink. To NOS Energy Drink. Now, back to the show. Carboys has always had a niche for going fast, and our two-wheeled bro bros is no different. Going all the way back to 1907, when Glenn Curtis set a world speed record on a motorcycle with a V8 aircraft engine plunked between his legs. He went 136 miles per, faster than any plane, train, automobile, or John Candy. So, going fast on two wheels, is nothing new. The first bike to break the 150 miles per hour speed record was the 1949 Vincent Black. It was the fastest production bike for 35 years. Another 35 year old record you might not know about is my life. I'm actually 34. In terms of just pure raw speed, these bikes were ahead of the curve. Now fast forward to the 1980s. The days of Teddy Ruxpin Bears, slap bracelets, the decade of my birth. But 1984, Kawasaki was sick of this Vincent company holding the title and released upon the universe the GPZ 900R Ninja. You got your classic ninjas. You got your GI Joe ninjas, snake eyes. You got your turtle ninjas. But it was the Kawasaki Ninja that set in motion a speed war in the two-wheel game that would change hands for the next 15 years. It took Kawasaki over six years to make in secret because of course, ninjas do everything in secret. And it was the world's first 16 valve, liquid-cooled, inline four-cylinder motorcycle engine. It went 151 miles per, making it the first stock road bike to exceed 150. It was so badass, they featured it in a little movie. I don't know if you heard of it. I don't know, maybe you have um, Top Friggin' Gun. We could do an entire up to speed on the Ninja, and I'm sure we will. It's an iconic bike. But while Kawasaki was off basking in the light of success, Suzuki was glum. Because three years prior, they had released the most powerful production bike ever, the GSX 1100 Katana. <laughs> It was a completely new design in the motorcycle world with sharp angles and bodywork that blended into the frame. It looked like a vehicle plucked out of a Star Wars movie. One of the good ones. When I was a kid, one of the only VHSs that we had was Return of the Jedi, and I loved it. And then I found out that it was the third movie in a trilogy. True story? Yeah. You thought Return of the Jedi was a standalone movie? Yeah, <laughs> for like years. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and also they made a version with The top speed record was flipping and flopping between manufacturers in the 90s from the Cowie to Bamoda back to Cowie right before Honda showed up with their Super Blackbird in 1996 and let me tell you This was a quick birdie <laughs> 169 170 oh. Like all great Japanese vehicles, the name Blackbird had meaning. Named after the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird. The world's fastest plane. Blackbird singing in the dead of night. This motorcycle's so fast. I'm gonna take it on the road. <laughs> 
Honda was getting all this fast boy attention and Suzuki, they didn't like it. So they went to work on their own speed machine. And in 1999, Suzuki released their all new motorcycle to the adrenaline fiends all over the flat and hollow earth. The GSX 1300R. Hayabusa! Hayabusa means peregrine falcon in Japanese. If you're curious as to why Suzuki named their new speed bike after a bird, I'll give you a rundown. One, it can dive up to 200 miles per hour. Two, they hunt and eat blackbirds. The first gen Hayabusa had a liquid cooled 16 valve inline four banger with double overhead cams. It used a ram air system with two air intakes placed on both sides of the headlights. At high speeds, air rushing into the intakes would become pressurized as it whirled its way to the motor. It was insanely fast with a top speed of 194 miles per. It made a claimed 173 horsepower and 98 foot pounds of torque. It was bulletproof. Engines with over 150,000 miles can be found still running strong to this day. The booster could scream from zero to 60 in 2.7 seconds. To put that in perspective, the fastest zero to 60 in a car in 1999 was the Dodge Hennessy Venom Viper, which was a full second slower. <laughs> The shape of the Busa was created by Suzuki's Koji Yashira. Tried. His goal was to create a totally new styling that wouldn't be dated in a few years time. A styling that would be the face of Suzuki. The Busa got its infamous looks from the extensive amount of wind tunnel testing performed with a rider on the bike. From all the data they collected, they shaped the bodywork specifically for high speed riding. The tank was shaped to allow the rider's knees to tuck behind into the bike even further, reducing drag at high speeds. Even the seat cowl was shaped to reduce drag. And on top of everything, it's got the Japanese character for the Peregrine Falcon, or at least that is what the internet tells me. Suzuki made sure their Blackbird Eater wasn't just meant to go fast in a straight line. Technically, the Busa was a sport tourer, so it needed to be comfortable while cruising, but still able to run on a track where there's curvy canyon roads everyone's always talking about. In their quest for speed, Suzuki had made the sportiest, sportiest sports touring bike ever. And because the bike was such a blast to ride, a lot of people bought them. And a lot of people that bought them, modified them. Like Harleys in the 70s, Hayabusa's were getting customized all over town. Anything your sweet little heart desired, you could get done. Single side swing arm? Yep. Air ride suspension? Yep. Bop. Power, baby? Turbo power, baby? All right! Yes, the Duck Hawk got a turbo. The engine was so reliable that you could freaking slap a turbo on it. Keep the internal stock and push your motorcycle to over 250 horsepower. The high horsepower and low weight combo on the Hayabusa motor lended itself nicely into other custom vehicles as well. You want a Turbo Busa smart car? You want a Hayabusa modern replica of the Bugatti Model 100 Air Racer? Yeah, a 900 horsepower twin Hayabusa powered streamliner that set the world land speed record at 394 miles per? As our French fans across the pond would say if they were in America. Yes, but first I would like to have a cigarette. One of our writers, Sarah, put one in a Miata. <laughs> the Busa even got featured in the hit summer blockbuster of 2003, Biker Boys, the fast and furious of motorcycles with the of the success. But I shouldn't have to tell you. Of course you've seen it. It's freaking Biker Boys. Kawasaki was also working on a bike to dethrone the Blackbird at the time, the ZX-12R, but the Busa beat them to it. What Kawasaki was claiming though was that their new bike could hit the 200 mile per hour mark. And for whatever reason, 200 miles per hour was too fast for politicians. 194, sure, but 200? Heaven no! This 200 mile per hour claim created a fear that this escalating speed war would end with Europe 
and other countries, I guess that means America, banning these high speed hyper sport bikes. So the manufacturers went off and made one of these <laughs> gentlemen's agreements. Now, although Suzuki and Kawasaki never officially released a statement regarding the agreement, the following year, both the Hayabusa and ZX-12R had an electronically limited top speed. Honda publicly stated that their bikes wouldn't exceed 186 miles per, which is the nice and round 300 kilometers per hour for my foreign friend. <laughs> wouldn't be until 2008 that a second gen Hayabusa would be released. They wanted to keep true to the look of the first gen, but still update it a little bit. So they came to the US and traveled around biker bars and motorcycle shows to see what they could take from the custom scene to influence the new design. The redesign was a hit. It built upon the already polarizing look of the previous gen while still giving it a light overhaul. They made some engine tweaks. The bike got faster. Displacement increased to 1,340 cc's and horsepower got bumped up to 194, but major portions of the frame and engine were kept unchanged to save costs. <laughs> Pretty much the same bike you can buy today, 11 years later. Because of stricter Euro 4 emissions regulations, as of December 2018, the European Hayabusa model was discontinued. <laughs> was discontinued. Ah! How do you, does that feel, Europe? You get everything cool, we don't get anything ever. USA! USA! Oh, and you remember that gentleman's agreement we talked about earlier? Yeah, it was broken. In 2007, MB Augusta broke it because they just didn't care anymore. And soon, Kawasaki followed with the H2R, a track-only bike that broke the 400 kilometer an hour mark. But maybe, just maybe, Suzuki will once again get fed up with sitting in the shadow of their green brother and make a third gen Hayabusa to take over the spotlight. Shout out to uh, NOS Energy. Back to the show. Mm.